Praise the Lord. All right, all of us, let's turn to John, the second chapter, the Gospel of John. I mentioned this last time that the Gospel of John has more of the words of Jesus than any of the other Gospels, any other place in your Bible. The words of Jesus are given to you in, in great detail in the Gospel of John. Let's try this again. Let me ask you this question one more time. How's everybody doing? Living the blessed life is a good answer. I'll tell you what, out in the world today, if you, if you pass somebody at work or in Myers or uh, if you go visiting your relatives and, you know, you ask them and a lot of people will say, you know, if you ask them how they're doing, they'll, they'll sometimes they'll say, well, you know, it's another Monday. You know how it goes. It's, it's another terrible Monday. Or somebody will say, pretty good under the circumstances. Well, my question is, what are you doing under the circumstances? Because Jesus wants you to rise above. Jesus wants you to get victory. And if you don't know about victory, you can get last week's message. It's right out in the lobby. It's free. You can take those in either the, a CD form or a DV form. So get used to it. God has destined you for victory. That means when the devil comes rushing in and causes all kinds of trouble, you can claim victory in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to write a song like that. Victory in Jesus. Anybody know that song? <laughs> yeah, they've already written that song. We have victory in Jesus. John, the second chapter, verse 1. Let's read. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they had ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, said to Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does that concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, he, first she's talking to Jesus, and Jesus has said, I'm not ready to be performing miracles. And then the, the mother, mother of Jesus turned to the servants and said, whatever he says to you, do it. And that's the same thing that we have before us this morning. Whatever Jesus says, do it. Because it's going to be for your benefit. So that's what our subject is. We're going to be talking about whatever Jesus said, that's what we should be doing. Doing what Jesus said. And let's get this straight right off the bat. So many people are used to not understanding who Jesus is. Right now today in 2019, Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is no longer a little baby in the manger. I, if you go out into the world and you start talking about Jesus, most people that aren't Christian, that don't attend church and get the Word of God regular, they're still thinking of Jesus and, well, you know, I remember him. He's, you know, that's what we celebrate Christmas, little baby in the manger. He's not a little baby in the manger anymore. He is king of kings. Amen. He's doing miracles today just like he did yesterday. Yes. Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Now let me say one more thing about John chapter 2. A lot of people in our society use some of these scriptures here. Well, Jesus turned water into wine. So it's okay to drink. Well, 
I'm not going to argue that point except to say this. Many people, if you're going to be honest before God, you take a little wine, you take a little drink, you drink to get a little buzz. Or let me say it different to you. You take a drink to feel different. And if that's the case, it's wrong. Now, if, if you're taking a little wine because uh, you don't have good water, which is the case in Europe and some other countries, okay. But still, the wine that some countries drink is very, very limited on alcohol. And the Bible's real clear about alcohol. Strong drink we should avoid. Or a drink that makes you feel different. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit over the top on this, I know. <laughs> I realize, and there are other arguments, and I don't mean to argue today, but I have seen so many in my family, including myself at one point, that were bound and held captive by alcohol. And I don't know how many people have been destroyed because of alcohol and drugs. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's a free-for-all in our society. People are looking for happiness. They're looking for joy. They're looking for something different in their lives because their lives are a wreck. And that's why they go to alcohol and drugs and some of the other things just to get a little sense of relief for a few moments. And that's all you get is just a few moments because after that you get sick. <laughs> and and uh, the world is there today. And you know what they're really looking for? They're really looking for the connection that they don't really have with their maker. See, we were created to have a connection with the maker of heaven and earth. You were created for that. And if you don't have that connection, you're missing something. So people are always trying to fill this void with things, with drugs, with sex, with you name it. Filling it with all kinds of... and. Now we even hear on the news perverted things, which they didn't even used to talk about. But people are trying to fill their lives with something that cannot fill what is empty. What is empty is they're missing their connection with the creator of the universe. And the only way you can have a connection is through Jesus. It's not just through God, because in this world there are many gods. Some people even worship the devil. They don't know what they're doing, just like Jesus said on the cross. They don't know, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But sometimes people get so desensitized to a relationship with God that we find ourselves in a real big minority. Believers I'm talking about. Matthew chapter 7, and let's look at verse 13. This is so huge, so important. You have to know this because you are a lot of times by yourself when you believe God. That's why it's so important. It's, it's not just important. It's a necessity to be hooked with a good church, a Bible-believing church. Amen. Jesus said this, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. That's our world today. There's so many opportunities. People are given all these opportunities by their friends, by the people they work with, by their relatives, by the people they meet. 
Everybody wants you to have a drink. Everybody wants you to go out and let's party. And people are tempted to go to this wide gate, this broad gate that leads to destruction. See, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time when you go the world's way that your life gets destroyed. And sometimes you can recover, and sometimes you can't recover. If you go so deep, you get desensitized, you get callous to the good things of God. How many of you know somebody that's sort of almost callous to the things of God? But we still have prayer in the name of Jesus and we don't give up, ever. Amen. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are, are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who find it. And we are among the few. And we're not going to stray off of the path. We're going to keep on that straight and narrow path. And sometimes you get persecuted. People don't like you. I have people in my family that avoid me. Relatives that used to think I was pretty cool. But see, and I'm not trying to get you to feel sorry for me, but I don't miss church because guess why? <laughs> I'm the pastor. <laughs> and some of my relatives over the years, I've been doing this for a lot of years, and they didn't understand it, why I couldn't be at their event. There's a couple of times I, I can think of several times that have happened in the past, uh, like we've had a special speaker here on Friday and Saturday. And one of my relatives had an event, you know, a birthday party or an or a anniversary or a whatever. But I had a special speaker coming in and they were coming in from out of town. I can't just take off and go to, a, well, listen, you're on your own guest speaker. I'm going to a birthday party. <laughs> it don't work that way. And some of my relatives got mad about it. They haven't talked to me for, in one case, 10 years. But, they, you know, uh, it happens sometimes even in the church. People don't understand, and they get confused a little bit, and and, and things happen and even see I could stand up here and defend myself in a lot of cases I could defend myself to relatives and all that but I'm not going to do it because they can say whatever they want I have been crucified with Christ but yet nevertheless I live but Christ lives in me yes. amen that's that's amen. it so I'm not going to get offended if people get mad and misunderstand me somehow. I'm not going to stand up here and try to defend myself. I'm defending the Lord Jesus, and that's it. Amen. 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 Matthew 7 is so important, it, it even goes farther than that, because we're talking about some things that Jesus said. And some of them are not easy, like the one we just read. Narrow is the way. I've had people in the past that I worked with at Ford Motor Company, and they heard, and you know how it is, people hear uh, this one, one time I, I worked at Ford, and I got laid off. And I was laid off from Ford for 11 months. And then I got called back. Well, the, the, the thing that happened during that time that I got laid off, I got born again, filled with the Spirit. And I worked with a lot of men at that time. Probably on the one floor I was on, there were 300 designers. And I only told one person that I got born again. And it went through that place. You think women are bad with gossip? 
Men are just as bad. They went through that place. Everybody knew in a matter of a half a day that Craycraft got religion. <laughs> you know how they do. They don't, they don't know what born again is. And, and, but I had several of real good friends of mine came up to me and said, that's it. I'm not going to have anything to do with you again. I had one guy even ask me questions. He started asking me questions about what is this about being born again. And, and, uh, and, and I gave him, I actually gave him a book. Actually, there were two guys like this. They went home and they read the book and they came back the next day and said, I went home and talked to my wife and we think you're a nut. <laughs> so that's it. Not going. And one guy told me, one guy I, I hang out with a lot of, all the time, and a uh, lot of sports, and a lot of Stroh's beer at the time. And he loved his Stroh's beer. If you're Polish, you have to love Stroh's beer, see? And he said, I want to talk to you some more about this, but uh, I would like you to go out to lunch. I'll buy you a Stroh's. And I said, Jim? I'll go to lunch with you, but I'm not going to drink the Stroh's. He said, what? You're not going to drink a beer with me? Okay, that's it. I'm not going to talk to you again. And he never did for 20 years, and I saw him again later on, and he apologized, but uh, it's kind of, it's the straight and narrow path. And see, I tried to explain to him, it wasn't about the beer. It's not, that's not what this is about. It's about my respect for the Lord. And I've gone a different way than I used to. I can't be what I used to be. Amen. See? And, you know, believe this or not. Actually, when I first got born again, I quit playing baseball. Wow. And a reason, baseball was my God. I played baseball three, maybe four times a week, not a month, a week. I was on several teams. So it was, it was basically my God. Sports was my God. And if you're going to change gods, and now later on the Lord let me go back and play ball again. But, but see, at first I had to just get rid of everything. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Just so I could get clear about what path I'm on. It's not on the path that I used to be on, which was leading to destruction. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Let's look at this. See, because we, we really need to know that it's important to do what Jesus said. Not just to hear it, not just to say, well, I've got all the books and tapes and t-shirts and bumper stickers. No, that's not it. It's hear the word of God and do the word of God. Jesus said this himself. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended. How many of you know we've got tornadoes and rain and hurricanes facing us? Listen, if you're founded on a rock, Jesus gave you this promise. The rain descended. The floods came. The winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on a rock. You see, this is like your life. Your life is needs to be founded on a rock. And that means you're founded on Jesus and what he said to do. That's my basis, my foundation. I live there. And he also went on to say in verse 26, he said, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, I will show you what he would be like. He would be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, it fell and great 
was its fall. Don't be deceived. You know, in a lot of places in the New Testament, we're, talked, we're, we're told that some of us can be self-deceived. Well, maybe I ought to correct that. All of us can be self-deceived if we are not on guard. We need to be on guard to do the sayings of Jesus. Now, let me tell you how hard it is. Jesus said in one place, he said that we should love our neighbors. But he said, I'll go one step farther. You should love your neighbor as yourself, and also you should pray for your enemies. See, he went farther. If you want to do the word of Jesus, you're going to have to go farther. You're going to have to go all the way. And not just pick out what you want. You see, what we'd love to have is, oh yes, Pastor, I love the scripture that says we can speak to the mountain, be removed, doubt not in my heart, but believe the things that I say will be done, and I will have whatever I say. I love that scripture. Well, how about the one that says, give, and it'll be given back to you again. <laughs> How about that scripture? Jesus said both of them, didn't he? Yes. He said both of them. Jesus said this. Let me see if I can find this here. You heard, this is in Matthew 6. Don't turn there. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Old Testament. Before Jesus died on the cross. But I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you. Are you thinking of one of your relatives now? <laughs> you do good to those who hate you. Wow. How about that? And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. That's a tall order. Jesus said, doing the sayings of Jesus <laughs> is the way to build your house on a rock. No compromise. So if Jesus is saying this, some of us do this. Jesus said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you. What about somebody that you just don't like very much? Does that mean it's okay to talk about them? How about, how about we talk about everybody in the church? <laughs> I don't think so. It won't fit, will it? No, it won't fit. No, Jesus said, pray for those that hate you. So you should pray for those that you just don't like very much, too. <laughs> All right, we won't go into that very farther, but you know what's talked about here. You know what Jesus said this, and we should be doing it. Matthew chapter 6. Let's turn back one chapter there and take a look at what it says. I know these are some basic things, but I want you to remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about doing what Jesus said. Not just hearing all the time. Some people think they're okay if they come to church and hear a good sermonette so that they can become a good Christianette. No, that's not it. You just don't come to hear something. You come to hear it with the idea of doing it. Because if you do the Word of God then even if the devil comes with a storm, the storms of life, which includes tornadoes and hurricanes and the storms and the weather, but also the storms of life that's sickness and, and addictions and, and being held captive by the devil, even those things, you will not fall. It's a promise of God. That you will stand strong, you believe God, you stand on the word of God, you do the word of God, and the devil cannot bring you down. 
You may fall down a few times, but you will get back up because you're a doer of the word. Listen, these things work. I don't know where some people miss it. Jesus spoke spiritual law. I know some, some of us don't like that word law, but it's, it's still the truth. It is spiritual law. We don't get to heaven by keeping spiritual laws, do we? No, we don't get to heaven that way. We get to heaven because Jesus died in our place and now we are in right standing with God. Or the Bible says it, the righteousness of God. That just simply means we are in right standing with God. So we will go to heaven because of what Jesus did at the cross. We don't earn things, but you operate in this world by spiritual laws. Just like the laws of gravity and the laws of lift. Some of you have taken airplane rides before. It, the, the law of lift says if you get going fast enough and you turn those wings just at a certain angle, that thing will take off. Because of the laws of uh, thermo, thermodynamics. We won't go into that, but that's the, the physical laws we live by. If you want to jump off the top of the building, there's nothing guaranteeing that you won't break your leg because, you know, you're foolish if you climb up to the top and jump off because gravity is going to bring you down to the ground. I was just listening to a, a good message by uh, Bill Winston the other day, and he told that story. I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but he had this favorite cereal that he used to buy. And in the cereal, you know how you can get prizes and if you send in so many coupons. And he sent away for his Superman shirt and cape. He had this all planned out. He had so many coupons. And he said, when I get my Superman cape, I'll be able to fly like Superman. And so he, you know, waited for six weeks and Got, got his Superman cape, climbed up on top of the house, and jumped off. <laughs> Guess what happened to Superman? He fell to the ground. Amen. Yeah. So, gravity is going to work, you know, regardless of what you believe about it. You, could, you can believe you're Superman if you want. But gravity is still going to work. It's been established by God. He established the waves of the sea and, the, you know, the tidal wave comes in at night and it goes out. You know, you know how that works? The, it's all been established by God. Things work this way. The, the earth revolves around the sun in a perfect way, just a, the, the precise exact distance from the sun that won't allow it to be burnt up, the earth, if it was a little bit farther away, just a little bit, we'd all freeze. God placed us exactly in that spot. And all the rest of the stars and the planets and the, all those things, God put them there. They're there on purpose. Yes. We don't know what they're, some of them are there for yet. But who knows about eternity? We may be planet hopping. I don't know. But God did this on purpose. Place things in an order. God is a God of order. Spiritually speaking, He did the same thing. There are spiritual laws that have been put into place. You can't see them. Spiritual laws are in the kingdom of God where they're unseen, and they work. Just like the angels. God said in the book of Psalms, He said, the angels hearken to the voice of my word. Now, who's going to give voice to the word of God? We all did this morning when we confessed 
the word of God all together. We confessed, I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. You know, when the angels hear that, they stand at attention, getting ready to act, go into motion, because God's word will never return to him void unless you cancel it out with your doubt and unbelief. <laughs> that can happen. Oh, dear God, I'm going to die. You know, a little, you get a little shaked up in your life. The devil comes to give you some trouble. And all of a sudden you start spouting out a lot of things that are negative. And the angels have nothing to do. Well, I guess he wants to go down the tubes. I guess he wants to lose his job. I guess he wants to be the one, the first one to get swine flu because that's what he's saying. He's giving voice to all those things. Somebody say amen to that. This is spiritual law. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You are snared by the words of your mouth. Snared meaning the devil can trap you into, and you'll pretty soon you'll start speaking things that are wrong, that are against the spiritual law that he put into place, that you will have what you say. Jesus said it. And you start speaking something opposite, and the opposite is going to happen. It's a spiritual law. Matthew 6, 33. Let's start at verse 25. I want to go real fast here. 6, 33. Uh, no, 6, 25. Let's start there. It says, therefore, I say to you, Jesus talking, do not worry about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Yes, it is. God can take care of you. Now let's skip down to verse 31. Therefore, do not worry saying, see how you can worry? You say something. Do not worry saying, well, I don't have enough. I don't have enough to pay my bills. I don't have enough clothes. I, 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 I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm living in poverty. If you keep saying that, you're going to keep worrying about it and you won't have your needs met. So what did God say? Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek or the unbelievers seek. Unbelievers, the very first thing in their thoughts, night and day, is how am I going to get ahead? How am I going to win the lotto? How am I going to get my big breakthrough? How am I going to make it happen? Oh no, it's not happening. That's the unbeliever. But the believers are different. The believers, all these things the unbelievers seek, for your Heavenly Father knows what you need. Uh, that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things that you need will be added unto you. That's a spiritual law. It works every time. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and your needs will be met. God is not a man that he should lie. We can trust the Lord. And I know a lot of times we'll look at our circumstances and they will speak real loudly to us. Oh, you know, you've got this problem and you got that problem and your, your kids are running wild. What, whatever, they're speaking loud. But the spiritual law of God is if you seek Him first, He'll work it all out. Amen. Amen. God is good. The, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 12, it says, God watches over his word to perform it, to bring it to pass. He's watching. He's watching. Are you really standing on the word of God? Are you a doer of the word of God? And there are some things that you will do if you are a doer of what Jesus said. You will do some things. Come to church. Read your Bible. Pray. 
Confess the word. These are all things that Jesus said to do. And he is not a liar either. He's telling the truth. A lot of times, see the things that he said, did you ever notice when you're reading the Gospels, it would say, truly, truly, I say to you, or verily, verily, I say to you. And you, you kind of think, well, Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Why did he have to say twice, truly, truly, I say to you? In other words, this is the truth. What I'm going to tell you is the truth. He had to tell us that because naturally, the unborn again spirit and the unrenewed mind doesn't want to believe. We want to think, it's too good to be true. So Jesus said it twice. And sometimes he has to call our name twice. Like he said, Martha, Martha, how long shall I be with you? <laughs> and Mary, if you remember the story, Mary was desiring the best thing. She was putting the words of Jesus first. And Martha was in the kitchen preparing food. And she was getting upset. You remember the story? She was upset that Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and not helping in the kitchen. And Jesus said, Mary is desiring the best thing. The first thing. First. Seek first the things that Jesus said. And you'll have a happy life. You'll have a joy-filled life. You'll have a life of freedom and not get held captive by the devil's every thought. He's bombarding people with thoughts every day. You're not going to make it. You're not good enough. That's why you have to renew your mind to the Word of God. Renew your mind to what Jesus said because He told you the truth. He will take care of you. He will cause healing to come into your body and your mind. He will cause you to be set free from every addiction. Amen. All you got to do is seek Him first. All you have to do is trust in the Lord with your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand.